Hello friends, in this session we are going to discuss the flow control function of data link layer. We already discussed the basic intro of data link layer in the previous session. If you have not viewed it, you can please go back to that video and see uh, and view that video. So as we discussed in that session that the three major functions of data link layer are error control, flow control and framing. So in this session, I'm going to focus upon flow control. Right. So flow control, first of all, what is the basic idea? What is the basic definition of flow control? It is when a sender transmits frames at a relatively higher speed. When a sender transmits frames at a relatively higher speed than it can uh, be received by the receiver, then there arises the need of flow control. Now, uh, so this is basically a situation given to us. First of all, we know that when we were at physical layer, we were talking in terms of bits, right? So we had the data in terms of bits. Now, when we have reached the data link layer, we have divided our data from bits to frames. Now we already have the frames. So what is happening is sender is sending the bits or the data in the form of frames to the receiver. Now when it is reaching the receiver, it is very important that both of them are synchronous to each other, right? The speeds should match. The sending speed should match the receiving speed. Or it should not happen that the sending speed is very much higher than the receiving speed. Because in that case, what would happen? What would happen? Why is this required? Because in such a scenario, what will happen is eventually if the sending speed is very much higher in comparison to the receiving speed, the buffer at the receiver side will get full, right? After some time, the buffer will become full. And if the buffer is full, it will not be able to receive any more frames from the sender. So if it is not able to receive the frames, what will happen to the frames? They'll be discarded, right? So there'll be data loss and that we do not want. So to avoid that data loss, to avoid some of the uh, frames to be lost, what do we do? We, uh, you, uh, we basically use these flow control techniques, right? So this is the function of data link layer. So th uh, that is the requirement why the flow control is required. So uh, flow control techniques, if we divide them into uh, the types, if we categorize them, there are two basic types. The first one is feedback based flow control and the second one is rate based flow control. So first we are going to discuss the feedback uh, based flow control. Uh, most of the numericals come from this part only and then we have the rate based flow control but first of all what is the basic idea of both what do i mean by both the terms so in feedback based flow control receiver sends the information to the sender after receiving a frame to send the next frame or send the same frame again if frame was not received correctly or if the frame was received successfully or not. So what is happening is basically after the receiver is receiving any frame, it is sending some kind of information back to the sender, right? And that information can be about sending the next frame that yes, I received this frame correctly, please send the next frame or this frame was not received cor correctly, could you please send that frame again? or if the frame was received or just informing that the frame was received successfully or not, right? So that is what is what comes under feedback based flow control. So till then the sender is not going to send the next frame. It is basically going to wait for the feedback from the receiver end after sending a particular frame. So this is very important. The sender waits for a feedback from the receiver end after sending a particular frame and only after it receives that feedback does it send the next frame right so next we move on to the rate based flow control what is rate based flow control rate based flow control basically it comprises of the techniques 
to limit the rate at which the sender is sending the data. So if the sender is sending the data at a very higher speed, we have some techniques under this category by which we can limit the speed, we can slow down the sending speed of the sender without using any feedback method, without using any feedback from the receiver. So uh, the techniques which come under the rate-based flow control are congestion control techniques. We are going to discuss them later on when we cover this topic. And the feedback-based uh, flow control has two major protocols under this category, which are stop and wait protocol and the sliding window protocol, right? Stop and wait and sliding window protocol. So in the next session, I'm going to start with the stop and wait protocol. And then we'll be covering the sliding window protocol and some numericals on both of them. So see you all in the next session with stop and wait pro protocol from the data link layer. Till then, stay tuned and happy learning.